There is a question about how um, a narcissistic child could be born from an empath parent. And they said, uh, so basically there was a person online asking a question and their child was grown, but their child was a narcissist and she didn't understand how because she was a good person and her ex was a narcissist. So I'm going to just try to clarify that and explain how this happens. And uh, also some new information which I heard from meeting with someone else. I'm not going to tell you who they were or what they were doing as it may give them away. And they are dealing with some personal issues so I don't want to cause any trouble for them. But um, I was informed that there was another woman who was able to see um, like auras and maybe not all the colors, but she could see um, if someone was light, and she could see if someone was dark. And she said that if you had a parent, if both parents were dark, then they could only have a dark child. And if both parents were light, they could only have a light child. Um, now, of course, if they sold their soul to the devil later, they could become dark. But then if you have one parent that's light and one parent that's dark, and I'm not talking about skin tone. I'm talking about like the Holy Spirit and the darkness would be evil. So if you had one parent that was light and one parent that was dark, you could either have a child that was light, which is good, or a child that was dark, which was evil and wicked. And so this is something that she saw, noticed, and had told this person I was dealing with. And I also have additional information. So in my case, I was, uh, it looks like I was betrothed to a high level demon, probably since birth and things were orchestrated and coordinated and I um, got together with them when I was 17 and he was 18 and we had two children. One of our children um, was an empath. Now she was um, she was um, targeted and witchcraft was used against her like self-harm spells and other things um, a lot of uh, spells were used on her to cause conflict in our relationship, which I didn't know this. I found it out recently. And uh, then we had another daughter, and she was, um, she was dark. She has joined the dark side, willingly sold out. Um, I don't know if they, they, they don't come out dark usually, but uh, I have some evidence as well to where um, when I had my first daughter, I had never had a baby before, so I really wasn't sure that I was pregnant. I thought that I was really sick and I didn't have health insurance at the time but um, I paid money or someone else paid money actually because I never went to the doctor. I went to the doctor so they could see what was wrong. They couldn't figure anything out and they gave me some antibiotics and I left. And Well, it turns out that I was pregnant. <laughs> it was funny. Um, but I had my suspicions that I was pregnant and I did not tell the narcissist, um, which is a leg legion of demons in one Nephilim. I did not tell them that I was pregnant and they did not know until I was like five months. So the the um, narcissist will poison you, will drug you, and I have reason to believe that they can even alter the DNA in an unborn child in utero. Or another thing they can do is um, and this is not like this individual, but there's a whole network of Satanists that work together. And so another thing they can do is um, like genetically modify um, an embryo and then implant it. So they can uh, make changes to the DNA so that uh, the child that is born is um, able to see things in the spirit and they're easily possessed. They're like a marker for demons. And it's just really difficult for them. So they're usually possessed or harassed. And this is something the family pledges the children. And yes, they can modify them, change them so they're not fully human. They're easily possessed. And then just from a young age, they can do rituals, tortures, uh, abuse. And this is something that one parent may have no idea about at all. All it takes is one weekend visiting the grandparents or one camping trip that you didn't go to in what looked like a normal, you know, pretty normal relationship at that time. And then uh, they can do a ritual. Uh, 
the child can agree to sell out. Um, my daughter mentioned several times that she sold out to become a famous singer and she would give me an evil sadistic look. I'm not sure I believe this because she's not famous, but she sings in the church all the time and she is a very violent evil demon half the time. Well. I don't want to say half the time because really it might only manifest around me and she might be pretty normal around everyone else. But uh, she's harbor harboring a very violent, um, sadistic entity. I believe it's a shadow person. And it's not like the ones in my narcissist. And uh, the reason that this violent one decides to um, possess my daughter, and she came into agreement with this is because she is really adorable. She was, she was like always the cutest kid you could ever imagine and so no one would believe this. No one would believe what she is and also if she hit me and she does hit me at times. I haven't seen her in a long time now. It's been um, more than six months since I really spent time with her. Um, through my isolation period the demons manifest and then they are completely um, my two children are completely um, separated from me at this point, and they have to be. But uh, they're under some type of mind control, but my youngest actually is a narcissist too. And I'm not sure if she has human soul left. I think uh, she is either half human and half um, narc, or she's fully possessed. But she could possibly be um, human when she's not around me. Um, so based on the evidence I have and uh, the narcissist was not aware the first time I got pregnant and he didn't know I didn't tell him I was pregnant until I was five months along that daughter was born normal and then we quickly had another child which he was aware of and I knew that he was drugging me and he had like a bunch of pharmaceutical drugs and uh, it wasn't like it seems worse, it sounds worse when you hang out with people and you hang out with Satanists and they take these drugs recreationally and they have them for fun or they have them to prepare for the, for the apocalypse, for the end times. So they make up reasons why they need it. It's not that it's to poison you, but uh, like say you were drinking then they might slip something into your drink. You drank a lot anyway, so you might just think you drank too much and that's why you overslept. But they drugged you as well, so while you were passed out they could implant an embryo in you or just any other time um, the narcissists do try to tempt you to do drugs and then uh, they act like it's fun they take the drug too and then they offer it to you and then when you take it if you pass out which sometimes you do who knows what happens and I do believe that they implant uh, embryos uh, so that they can get hybrid children, children that are easily possessed, and say that you do bear like a normal child. That child can still go through the occult rituals, uh, child abuse, where their minds are fractured, where the soul leaves the body, and then another entity comes in and possesses. And that can happen even without the child selling out. So, um, yeah, that's why you can have both. And I wouldn't say that it's genetic, because... Uh, there are Nephilim and these are hybrid beings and they exist and they walk around on the earth and they um, use like a hologram or frequency to make themselves appear human but I believe that there was an original human there that sold out so they're just manifesting like they're displaying themselves as a human where they um, gain the rights to use uh, that, that image so they're using the image of the human but it's actually a Nephilim which is a hybrid being it's like half angel and half human and these since they lived under the water and they were in marine kingdom did not die um, in the flood like the other Nephilim did so these can walk around but if you try to have a child with them it's not going to work so you cannot have a child it's like different species cannot uh, because of the chromosomes and things like that. It just doesn't work. But what they can do is that they can take their genetic information and then your genetic information, put it together in a lab, um, like genetically engineer an embryo and then implant it in you. And this makes sense. If you were already spending time with them anyways, then you would just assume that it uh, came about naturally. But um, if you are with a fully hybrid being, then this is the only way you get pregnant. You cannot get pregnant another way. Now, in the beginning of the relationship, I think it was a human body. Um, and then the devaluation and discard demon is that is only enough. 
So there's various stages where things happen and go on. And they have like the original human body, but they also have the ability to clone it because they have the rights to the body once the human sells their soul or they sell out. And then they can also make an android or they also have the Nephilim, which are the hybrid beings. It's a, this is all talked about in Genesis in the Bible and the Old Testament. And uh, the hybrid beings, when they walk around and pretend to be your partner, um, cannot actually have a child with you naturally, so they use science. So there are all these different ways that you can have a child that's a narcissist. And it seems cruel that a young child, a young child could sell their soul to the devil. Like, how could they do that? But God is the wisest, and uh, nothing like this comes about in an unfair manner. Um, and the Quran specifies, uh, the Quran specifies why things like this can happen. And uh, I'm not sure there's an exact reason in the Bible. We have to use logic to determine why that might be. But in the Quran, it says that um, like when a baby dies or you know a young child dies, it's because when they grew up, they were going to like com like murder or you know commit a bunch of crimes. And, you know, imagine like super Hitler or um, you know a serial killer. So sometimes a baby or a child is taken out early to avoid that. So people, uh, a lot of times atheists complain like, look at Hitler. Why did God allow Hitler to exist? Okay. So a lot of times when there would be humans, like adults that would be worse than Hitler, then they end up being killed or dying in infancy or childhood. And it's also stated that even if they had grown up, they would not have repented and they would not have went to heaven. So that would not have made a difference. And so these are the types of beings that would be allowed to sell out at a young age where it wouldn't have changed the course of events. When they grew up, they still would have chosen the dark side. Remember that they are influenced. One of their parents is evil. And there are differences mentally with them, especially if they're a hybrid being. Lack of empathy. Uh, well, we all, we all can figure uh, what they do. We know how they behave. It's all on purpose. And they view us as an enemy. So if they have a child with you, then they could be um, bearing a, a hybrid being that is an enemy to humanity. And uh, it's sad. None of us want to consider that one of our ch children will go to hell. But fortunately, this does happen. And sometimes our parents go to hell. Sometimes our brothers and sisters go to hell. Sometimes our best friends go to hell. But what we can be sure of is that when they do, they deserve it. This is a sad thing, but the good news is that God knows our sadness and uh, how we feel and will um, bless us with other children that are good. So it also talks about other stories in scripture um, to where one child might die that was going to grow up and be very evil and wicked and do horrible things, but then another child is born that was a really good child. So, God knows what we go through. It's not like uh, we would bear one child that was evil, it dies, and we never have another child, unless this is something we previously agreed to. It, it is also possible to have more than one life on Earth. So, reincarnation does sometimes happen, but this is not the rule. This is an exception. So, the Quran specifies, and the Jews believe this as well. Actually, the Jews believe we all have many lives, so they believe this more extreme than, than Muslims do. And Christians tend to believe that we have one life, and some of us do, but a lot of us don't. So, the Quran says that the human being is prescribed one life. So that means the doctor orders one life. So we're all to have one life, okay? But that doesn't mean we can't have more, okay? So if the doctor tells you to um, eat an apple, one apple a day, well, you could eat three apples a day, too, but you you only need to eat one apple a day, something like that that I'm trying to explain. You can tell I didn't get much sleep here, but I'm trying to answer a question while it's fresh on my mind, is that you're not a narcissist, you're a good person, you tried to raise your child right, then how come your child has grown and they're a narcissist? Well, this is how. Um, the other parent is demons and Nephilim. 
the Nephilim is uh, more intelligent, the demons would not be able to walk around and look human. So they need a high level demon, they need a Nephilim. So before, uh, say there is no Nephilim, then the human soul still must be present. So before the narcissist fully sells their soul, sometimes they're just possessed. And this can happen when they come from an occult Illuminati family. Um, in my ex's case, he was from that type of family where um, the ritual was passed down through the generations. So he was abused as a young child and uh, that caused mental problems, uh, shattering the mind. And they told me straight off he was bipolar, but basically um, they pledged their children to the dark side. So it is possible that God has their human souls. And does that soul go to hell? Maybe. Maybe it would be a very wicked person. But if they'd never had a chance, I'm holding out hope that possibly they're in heaven waiting to be raised by their parents that never had a chance. This is possible. God is beyond fair. So I'm actually thinking that uh, we have all these families, these are called Illuminati bloodline families, where uh, as soon as the baby is born, they start abusing it, torturing it, and that its mind is fractured and it gets possessed. And so, and this is just passed down over the generations, then I think it's very possible that God has their souls and they are living, they are growing up and raising their families in heaven. I really think that could be the case, but here on earth, that's not what we see. So, uh, you can have a hybrid child that is born using science, just like uh, doctors can do in vitro today. Uh, the Satanists, the devil worshippers, are very much involved in this, including the, the Nephilim, which are half angels, and angel technology is far more advanced than anything that we know of or use. This is like um, DARPA, like a government, hidden, like, well, you know what I mean, X-Files type stuff. And uh, if your child is born normal, or they're mostly human, then they can be ritually abused. And uh, if they're tortured to the point to um, to where their mind, their soul can't bear it, then the soul will leave the body. And what I've heard is that like Jesus or an angel comes and takes that child out of the body. They take the soul so the child doesn't experience this. But while the soul is out of the body, then entities, dark entities can go in. Now this goes against free will. The devil skirts the rules. And in these cases, the parents also pledged, they like sold their children to the devils to get whatever thing that they wanted to have. Or they're already on the dark side. Or they're already a narcissist. So it can be genetic, like through genetic manipulation. Um, and it can be through rituals. And does that child, does the human soul go to hell? Well, I do think that like, Here's the sad thing that I do think, that um, if you're trying to have a child with a narcissist and they know this, um, if they are a Nephilim, they cannot have a child with you naturally. They can um, get a genetically modified embryo to where it doesn't have a human soul and it's just like an empty um, android or, or what do you call it? Like It's just like an empty vessel for walk-in spirits. In which case there there wasn't a soul and this is something else um, they can be alluded to in the Quran where it says that God decides whether or not to put a soul in the embryo and most of the time I think that there would be but in these types of cases um, where there's genetic engineering manipulation and we're dealing with demons it's possible that no soul was placed in there because if there was a soul then possibly it would just be abused in the worst possible ways you can imagine and then its body overtaken by demons, in which case it would be a mercy not to put a human soul in there. Um, but I know that we are in the battle of Armageddon now, it's the end times, and 2024 is the final battle. So either the end of this year or next year, the devil will be cast into hell. And I believe the demons are being judged too. And so one way or another this is all going to end very soon and then what's going to happen to those bodies afterwards i think that it would be wonderful if um, the human souls were able to reclaim their bodies so guys let's don't give up yet the best thing we can do is pray 
pray to God. God hears our prayers. And I know like intercessory prayers, I don't think it works quite that way because we have free will. But in this case, the free will was overridden and the believers weren't praying against it. So the devil was um, like working with loopholes and things that it wasn't really fair. But the believers didn't really know what was going on or they didn't believe this. They weren't praying against it and they weren't stopping the devils. They weren't stopping the demons. They weren't stopping the Nephilims and they let it happen. So in a sense, they view that as free will. They tell us in the movies and in the TV shows what they do and we sit back and do nothing. So that is giving our consent and that's how things have gotten this bad. So it maybe isn't consent to the child. So the parent, ch the, the parent um, pledges their child to the dark side. So that's kind of like, it's like quasi consent, but it's not consent to the child. But then when they inform us what they're doing and we don't pray against it, and we don't use spiritual warfare, we don't use sport, spiritual warfare against it, then we are giving consent to it. So that's why this, this that's why this has happened. And that's why it's the extent it is. But also, in Revelations, it says there's a period of time where the demons, the devils, are given the, the power to overcome the saints. Now, that doesn't mean that we're all murdered. That's not what that means. Overcome means like to defeat, um, to overpower us in battle. And that's what they're doing now. And how do they defeat us? By getting us to sin? By breaking our hearts? Not by just coming out with swords and murdering us. So the way that they are overcoming the saints and believers now is uh, the devil's army now, which is narcissists. Uh, the devil is sending out the demons. Uh, demonic activity is at its height. The devil is sending out the demons in uh, skin suits, in human bodies, clones, or androids. Or even Nephilim walking around with like holograms or frequencies making them look human. They are walking around and they are overcoming us right now. And I think what caused this, what led into this being allowed to happen, which was prophesied and it was written in your Bibles, was um, CERN. So we've all heard about CERN and what they were doing underground, uh, like making this big portal. And I believe they were trying to open the door make an opening from hell so that these beings could come out of hell. And you can see the rituals and the dances they performed with the demonic beings uh, when CERN was opened. So they were trying to make a door so that the demons could get out of hell, so that the devils could get out of hell. And that's what we're seeing. The devil's army are these narcissists. And they're not out like murdering us for the most part. There's a few serial killer ones, but most aren't. No. They're breaking our hearts and trying to get us to sin. They're on the dating apps. So what they do is they get into relationship with us, pretend to be our ride or die, pretend to be our soulmates, and then they break our heart and betray us in every way they possibly can. And then they use um, they use like uh, some type of mind control to turn your children against you and take those and steal all your resources and assets. And they want you to either kill yourself, but what they really want what they really want is for you to be in such a sad situation that you rebuke and reject God, that you turn away from God. That's what they want. This is like replaying the story of Job in the, in the Old Testament. So um, God knew that Job would not give up his faith no matter what the devil did. And so God pointed out Job, like, look at my servant Job. And uh, so... This was a, actually a job for the devil to do, was to try to tempt and, you know, just wreck the life of this man who was wealthy. He had all this stuff. The devil was like, look what all he has. That's why he worships you. If he didn't have anything, he wouldn't worship you. Okay, so then the devil takes all of it away. All of his wealth, his health, his children, his wife, like everything is destroyed and his children are killed, like... I think his employees are killed. I don't remember exactly, but basically he loses everything. And then he's got like leprosy or something. And then he looks awful too, and he's like dying. And people come and they tell him, you're dying because you must have sinned. You must have done something wrong. But in this case, like usually yes, but in this case, no. Um, in this case, he agreed to this life when he was in the spirit realm before he came to earth. And God made him so strong that he knew he could handle it. God gave him a heart of gold. So, God even came to him and spoke to him during this time. 
So God knows how much we can bear. So if he was about to end it all, then God would have came in and spoken to him. We know that God did. Um, and it, at the end, he had like double what he had before. He was even wealthier, and he had all new children, and the children that he had before were probably in heaven waiting as well, and they were famous. So it's not just like they died and they're gone. No, life is just like the little test. They would be living on in heaven, and then he would have even more children in heaven. They'd be famous, known forever, and in a book of the Bible. Like, that's totally worth it. So, that's kind of like the devil, uh, what the devil's doing now in this battle of Armageddon is that God is allowing it. And then you have the 144,000, you have the chosen ones and the saints, and then that spreads out. More and more people hear the testimony, and they come into faith, and then they're believing in God, and then they get attacked, so we're all being attacked. And then this is like building up the sins of the demons for their final judgment and the devil so they can get the maximum penalty possible on judgment day. So, yeah, this kind of went a little off topic. And I didn't get any sleep and now it's morning, so it could sound better. But I hope you understand now how your child can be a narcissist. But the best thing you can do is pray and know that... Uh, you keep your faith in God and get a stronger connection with God and God will pay you double for your trouble. Um, probably there was either no human soul at all or there was and it's safe and God is keeping it. So, but you can pray. The best thing you can do is pray for them. And uh, God already knows what you need. And uh, it's almost over. We've got less than one year left. We've got less than six months left. I mean, what is it now? Eight? Okay, it's August. It's August of 2024. 2024 is the final battle. It's almost over, guys. So eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. We have four months left in the Battle of Armageddon, which could possibly end before then. But I have a feeling that we need to watch out for when um, the elections take place. So if the elections take place, as promised, with no meddling, and Trump wins... That's going to kick off all of our victories. Um, if something else happens, then the battle isn't quite over yet. So I do believe that if Trump wins, that marks the turnaround. So this is just a theory based on what is most likely. doesn't mean it will happen. But guys, I, I hope you learned something. And a lot of us have narcissist children. A lot of us have narcissist parents too. And it breaks my heart in all cases. But remember that God is aware and God is in control. Either they were never human, or God is keeping their human soul. And they too agreed, uh, at least to be a vessel for some mission that was necessary to bring about heaven on earth, which comes at the end of this. So guys, thanks for, thanks for listening. God bless you.